Hello everyone, this is Dr. Prashant and welcome back to my public health series. So in this video, I'll be briefly talking about civil society and the social movements in health. So to start with civil society, it's a group of concerned citizens are working for a shared objective which is generally oriented towards the welfare of people. The rise of social movements, NGOs and other voluntary organizations led to the conceptualization of the term civil society. So to make it more easy, we can use the term civil society in the following scenarios where first it is the collaboration of non-governmental organizations and institutions which represent the interests and will of the citizens. And in the second scenario, where individuals and organizations in a society which are independent of the government and advocating the interests of the citizens. Now coming to the key features of civil society, it uses communication tools for mobilizing support, achieving the objectives and creating a conducive discourse of their ideas. It have a sympathetic attitude towards the problem which motivates them to think of a widely accepted solution to the problem. So they involve the stakeholders at every stage of planning and execution of the project. So they try to negotiate with the stakeholders and take their feedback frequently. Their execution strategy is not very rigid like government projects but there is a scope of course correction according to the feedback received. They also play their role as whistleblowers when they find some inefficiency or corruption at the part of the government. Now let's look at the history of civil society in India. Initially, the voluntary contribution in India took place through the social and religious movements of serving others. So in the pre-independence era, several reformers fought against systemic social justice which played a significant role in challenging social norms of the time. So some of the organizations during that era include Brahmo Samaj, Theosophical Society, Ramakrishna Mission and Seva Samiti. And the first university of social work was established in India during the pre-independence era that was Tata Institute of Social Sciences. And during the post-independence era, we can see the rise of non-governmental organizations and the focus shifted from a pure welfare approach to one of development where organizations started to play a bigger role in the public service delivery of basic goods. Now coming to the end of 20th century, the significant contribution of civil society was through social change movements. So there was a shift from a pure reform and development based approach to a rights and empowered based model. So some of the examples include Chipko Andolan for the protection and conservation of trees and the Narmada Bachao Andolan for the prevention of displacement of communities due to dam construction. Now coming to the types of civil society organization, it includes NGOs that is non-government organizations, CBOs, community based organizations, religious and faith based organizations, membership associations, research organizations, social movements and the youth or student organizations. So now let's look at the legal and regulatory framework. India's civil society is governed by a complex legal and regulatory framework. So these are some of the regulations and laws related to civil society. First is Societies Registration Act 1860, the Indian Trust Act 1882, Section 8 of the Indian Companies Act 2013 and provision of CSR under Section 135 of the Indian Companies Act. And the last is Foreign Contribution Regulation Act 2010. So now coming to NGOs that is non-government organizations. These are independent organizations working without government intervention. So they are classified as operational NGOs and advocacy NGOs. So the government is the biggest contributor for these NGOs followed by the corporate sector through the CSR that is corporate social responsibility funds. The impact in healthcare is the collective outcome of direct and indirect interventions by NGOs. So what does it mean? An NGO having the mandate to work for the environment also create awareness about the ill effects of pollution over human health. So that means even if the NGO is not registered to work in the healthcare sector, it is creating an impact in healthcare. Next is community based organizations or CBOs. A community based organization is defined as assisting a group of people to recognize their common demands and help them to fulfill those demands. So the role of community based organizations is to work for the welfare of a community. So it is not necessarily a geographical or social community. It could be a group of individuals having some common problems. Example, a community of AIDS patients or a community of acid attack victims. Next is Sochara. It is Society for Community Health Awareness Research and Action. So it is an NGO working in the healthcare sector and it started as an experimental community cell CHC in 1984. CHC is a functional unit of Sochara project and they started a center for public health and equity that is CPHC in 2008 to encourage health equity and social justice addressing gender issues. They also work for health related advocacy and to develop a community based model for promoting universal health care. They also initiated the community health library and information center CLIC an online library project. 
in the school of public health equity and action sofia a training and policy research initiative was also started by sochara so the main focus areas include action advocacy training research policy action and communication now coming to jsa also called as gen swasthya abhiyan it is an indian chapter of people's health movement so it is working in the field of healthcare and was founded in 2000 and the headquarters was in new delhi so the main focus areas of jsa are health equity sustainable development and human rights so they developed a framework known as people charter for health which is a document for advocacy and field action by the organization and the charter supports the almaeta declaration 1978 and wanted to promote healthcare as a fundamental human right as a part of this right to health campaign jsa started taking initiatives towards setting up health tribunals where the documented cases of denial of health services were presented before the panel members of the tribunal and the public and in collaboration with the national human right commission jsa drafted the national action plan where it recommended the government to increase the health budget to 3% of gdp now coming to gen swasthya sahyog it is a group of public health professionals and workers where most of them were trained at leading medical institutions such as aims and they are working in the field of rural health care in the bilaspur district of chatisgarh so they serve the tribal population of the state and they cater to over 2500 villages in chatisgarh and in madhya pradesh they work as village health center providing villages access to health care facilities so jss is also working in the health communication sector where they have published a book called atlas of rural health so where they have documented stories testimonials and ground reports from the villages of central india now coming to sama which is resource group for women and health it is a collaboration of various social movements working at regional national and global levels and they are working on issues related to women their health and their rights so it is working broadly on the subject of access to health care so it produces a lot of content for health communication which include posters articles and documentary films and their content is based on subjects like maternal health gender based violence new reproductive technologies contraceptive choices and awareness about hiv now coming to search which is society for education action and research in community health they train community health workers in tribal areas and also conduct research to improve rural health care delivery next is care india which works to strengthen the health system by training health workers improving maternal and child health outcomes and enhancing the nutritional status of marginalized populations next is oxfam india which works on promoting health equity particularly focusing on gender justice and access to essential health care services for marginalized communities next is amnesty international india which advocates for the rights of marginalized groups and has been involved in the campaigns for right to health and particularly about mental health and the reproductive rights next is chra that is center for health research and innovation which engages in research to improve health programs especially in tb control maternal health and immunization next is sangat which is a leading mental health research organization in india that focuses on community based mental health interventions particularly for children and adolescents next is dfi that is doctors for you it's a volunteer based medical organization that provides disaster relief and emergency health care services to vulnerable populations in times of need next is goonj uh, which primarily a development ngo it also works in the health sector particularly during disasters by providing sanitary products medical supplies and hygiene materials next coming to the social movement of health in india social movements are nothing but the activities initiated to counterpoise the current health system attempting to collectively influence health determinants health care and health related ideology in simple words these are organized efforts aimed at improving health outcomes health services and social determinants of health across the country and let's understand this with an example so what we can consider as the health component or the component of health movement a struggle for improving a determinant of health that is for example for adequate quality and quantity of drinking water this can be considered as the component of the health movement because this has been taken up by people with the explicit primary objective of improving their health what the adequate quality and the quantity of drinking water now coming to the objective of social movement it is to generate public awareness regarding the commercialized and to an extent the exploitative nature of the healthcare in our country today and to generate pressure for changes in health policies making them responsive to people's need so now let's look at some of the important social movements in india first is people's health movement uh, which is also called as gen swasth abhiyan we have already discussed it next is nrhm that is national rural health mission it aims to provide accessible affordable and quality healthcare to rural populations 
Next is right to health movement. These movements advocate for recognizing healthcare as a fundamental human right. Examples include Oxfam India, Medico Friends Circle and Health Equity Networks. Next is anti-privatization of healthcare movement. In response to the growing privatization of healthcare in India, various groups have mobilized to protest against the commodification of health services. Next is campaigns for public health reforms. So these focus on improving public health infrastructure, addressing issues like malnutrition, maternal and child health, sanitation and the spread of communicable diseases. Examples include UHC that is universal health coverage and right to food and improved water sanitation and hygiene. Next is women's health and reproductive rights movements where women's groups and feminist movements have played a significant role in advocating for reproductive health rights, better maternal health care and addressing issues like domestic violence which affects women's health. So examples include SEVA that is Self-Employed Women's Association and National Alliance of Women's Organization that is NAWO. Now coming to HIV or AIDS activism, groups like the NAS Foundation and the Indian Network for People Living with HIV or AIDS along with other international organizations played a key role in fighting stigma, ensuring access to treatment and advocating for the rights of HIV positive individuals. Next is mental health advocacy where movements are calling for the destigmatization of mental illness, better access to mental health services and the integration of mental health into primary health care. Next is movements for indigenous and tribal health where movements like Samata and Ekta Parishad work to ensure that these communities have access to healthcare services, safe drinking water and nutritional security while also preserving their traditional health practices. In the last is environmental movements linked to health. So it includes movements like Chipko movement and Narmada Bachao Andolan uh, which we have already discussed. So they have emphasized the impact of environmental degradation on health. So now we have discussed about civil societies and the social movements. So now let's understand the difference between these two. So these two that is civil society and a social movement have a same aim to improve public health and healthcare access but they operate in distinct ways. So first coming to civil society, it is more formal organization like NGO or CBO or advocacy group. But social movement is informal, loosely organized and often driven by grassroots activism. And under civil society you can see it engages in service delivery, capacity building and public health programs focusing on providing health care, raising awareness and improving health infrastructure. Whereas social movements often arise in response to specific crises or health injustice such as poor health care access, inadequate sanitation or the spread of disease. So examples of civil societies include PHFI, Public Health Foundation of India or Care India. Whereas social movements examples include People's Health Movement or Jan Swast Abhiyan. So coming to civil society, they use more institutionalized approaches such as program implementation, policy dialogues, capacity building and research. Whereas social movements use methods like protests, public demonstrations, social campaigns, petitions and direct action to bring attention to health issues. So let's understand these approaches with example. First coming to civil society, organizations like Sangat work through evidence-based interventions to improve mental health services. Whereas example of social movement like anti-privatization of healthcare is done through public rallies and media campaigns to demand better public health services. Thank you.